Welcome everyone to our weekly webinar. Today we have, as usual, an outstanding presenter. We only like to bring outstanding presenters to you. Uh, we're going to talk about bookkeeping. Oh, I know. Bookkeeping. It's not one of the more exciting topics, but as you'll find out, it is probably one of the more important topics for you to know. I am Diane McKeever. I am the chairman of the Minnesota Chapter Education Committee, and it is our committee that puts all of these together. Today, we are happy to have Melinda Alaptushian. Oh, I didn't get it right, but you'll correct me, uh, uh, who has presented to us before successfully. And she is going to tell you all about how bookkeeping can help you understand your business and how you can probably prosper as a result of good bookkeeping. But before we get started with that, of course, we have a little bit of business to attend to. Uh, what is SCORE? SCORE, as we were saying, is the best kept secret in town. We've been uh, in business for almost 60 years, and yet a lot of people don't know that we offer free, free business mentoring for businesses in our area. And actually many of our, our uh, mentors uh, advise people throughout the country. So if you're anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country, actually, let me limit that, anywhere in the country, we can help you. We provide uh, free confidential business advice. Our chapter has nearly 90 volunteers who are waiting to talk to you and find out about your business and how we can help. And our chapter was recently uh, named a district chapter of the year. All right, so when can we help you relative to your business development? Well, you woke up this morning and thought you had a good idea. That's the time to contact a mentor because we can kick the the idea around with you, work on a couple of worksheets, see if you could make some money with that idea. So pre-startup or you've started and then realize that, whoops, maybe you didn't know all the things that you thought you did. So we can help you there, grow your business. Or lastly, if you're thinking about selling or closing your business, we have a special team that is dedicated to doing just that. Uh, don't pay too much for a new business and don't sell it for too little. How do you get a mentor? Well, it's not that difficult. You go to our website, score.org slash Minnesota, and there's a big old button that says request a mentor. You put in your zip code and you will be assigned a mentor. Or you can even look for the mentor profiles and find your own mentor and see if you can uh, apply to get that mentor assigned to you. You'll also find a list of all of our webinars, workshops, uh, and also there's a, a great search feature on there. So you can search for all of our recorded webinars and other resources like templates, uh, cash flow templates, um, business model canvas templates, uh, all kinds of templates there. Lastly, I want to thank our sponsors. You'll notice that a lot of the sponsors are financial institutions. We were just talking about uh, going into a bank without having, looking for a loan, without having your three-year financials. Well, the banks that we work with, the financial institutions, know that we wouldn't allow you to do that. That first we'd work on your financials and then we'd bring you to the bank. And so they listen to people who have SCORE mentors a little bit more closely than they would other Otherwise. So think about getting a mentor if you're thinking about um, needing some money. We don't give money. We help you get money. That's what our role is. And thanks to the community partners. So without further ado, I am going to stop sharing my screen. Let me just see where I find that. Stop sharing. Oops, share screen. It's already. Oh, was I not sharing it? Oh, goodness. Uh oh. Okay, stop sharing. All right, Melinda, go ahead and share. Okay, that looks good, Melinda. Go for it. All right. Thank you, Diane, um, for having me on um, and, and welcome everyone that's listening and tuning in. My name is Melinda Olupatan. 
I am the founder and the CEO of Cohen on Integrity Bookkeeping. We are a local bookkeeping firm in Sarasota. Um, however, we use QuickBooks Online. We are QuickBooks Online specialists, so we can work anywhere in the United States for anyone that needs bookkeeping and accounting services for their business. Um, today, I want to talk to you about unlocking growth in your business, what that looks like, how it's done, um, what can keep you from achieving that growth, and also what can accelerate that growth. So we're just going to go through a couple of slides. I'm going to show you some things. Um, as I mentioned, we uh, specialize in QuickBooks Online. So that is the software we are going to be talking about today to create your financial graphs and pictures and just overall know what is your business making in revenue? What, is our, what are the expenditures? Um, are you making money or are you losing money? So we're going to talk about what QuickBooks offers in that term. So... Um, my word for 2024, you know how everyone says, do you have a word for 2024? My word for 2024 is clarity. Um, if you have clarity about whatever project you're trying to achieve, you get so much further, so much faster than if you're walking around and you're not sure what you're doing and what you're not. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to incorporate clarity in our presentation today. Um, so let me make sure I have my slides going here. Okay. Do you have an accounting software you're currently using? I specialize in QuickBooks Online. It does not have to be QuickBooks Online. It can be any accounting software. It can even be an Excel. I do not recommend an Excel. Um, simply for it doesn't give you the P&L balance sheet that you need as the business grows. However, if you're really tiny just getting started, it, it will suffice. It's better than a shoebox. So um, if, if Excel is what we're gonna use, instead of a shoe box, then by all means, let's use Excel. Um, what can QuickBooks Online do for your business? When, it done, when it's done correctly, it provides clarity. It gives you clear financials on time. It shows you your cash flow. It um, provides easy tax filing at the end of the year if it's properly managed. Um, it allows you to do a tax planning. So a lot of CPAs will use your QuickBooks um, chart of accounts. They will use the p and balance sheet. Um, they will use that to do the tax planning. And some of you, if you are in third, fourth year of your business, you may need to sit down and do tax planning to be able to utilize um, strategies and deductions to prevent you from overpaying in taxes. Um, the other thing that QuickBooks Online does really, really well, and the reason I'm touching on this, because we just finished 1099 contractor season and um, we it was a struggle. We had so many new businesses open that did not properly track their 1099s throughout the year. So we were chasing numbers, trying to figure out how much each contractor was paid to be able to issue that 1099. QuickBooks Online offers that trackability with clarity so that you don't have to run around at the end of the year and try to figure out. It even allows you to upload the W-9s and get the W-9s straight into QuickBooks. So that's a wonderful feature that my company will be utilizing a lot more in 2024 for all the businesses that we serve just to help streamline that process to make sure the 1099s get out by January 31st. Um, so, so this is one of the, the, when you log into your QuickBooks, if you have QuickBooks, you may have seen this. What, one of the things that QuickBooks offers you when you log in or your accounting firm or outsourced booking, bookkeeping firm logs in it gives you an overview. Where are you at with your weekly tasks? What needs to be taken care of? What needs attention in your books? Most people don't even know this um, that this is available to them. Um, for example, if you do AR through your QuickBooks, it shows you that you have 10 unpaid invoices. So you can quickly go in and remind clients, hey, can you please remit payment for this? And we can talk about that for anyone that wants to know how to receive payments through QuickBooks. We also help with that setup. Um, it lets you know that you need to categorize transactions to get your numbers caught up. It also lets you know that you have overdue bills that need to be paid or some that are coming up to pay. This looks different based on your company. And then it also lets you know if you've got one that's coming up to be paid. So this is an overview weekly task dashboard that's on your QuickBooks Online that allows you to see where are your financials and what you do you need to tend to for that week. The other thing that QuickBooks Online will show you, um, and this is the main, one of the main features on the, on the left-hand side in that black bar, it shows you all of the different 
tabs that you have available to you in your business, the most important one for clarity in your financials is your transactions tab. Your transactions tab will show you all of the bank accounts you have connected or credit cards that pertain to your business. This is where the transactions flow into that in turn have to be given a vendor or in this case a payee and a category, which is the expense category that creates the P&L balance sheet. p and balance sheet is what goes to taxes. So this is when, when we have, um, we have over 70 clients that we serve on a monthly basis. We take care of their finances. They focus on growing their business and the growth has been unbelievable in 2023 because of the peace of mind that they had knowing that this side of it was being taken care of. This is what we do. Um, and we come in here each, each week, our company does all of our, our accounting weekly so that we know where anytime you call us and say you need transactions, you need a report, it's available on a weekly basis, but the monthly financials are provided as a, as a monthly ongoing service. But here it allows you, and, 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 and this is the other thing, for those of you that are new, that are venturing into QuickBooks Online, you'll see here on the, on the right-hand side that says there's a video tutorial. QuickBooks even gives you a video tutorial to show you how to categorize transactions. So for those of you that are not in a position to outsource to a bookkeeping firm, um, those give you tools to learn how to do it yourself. But this is a very, very important part of, of accounting. And a lot of small businesses don't take the time to learn this aspect or to find someone that can do it for them. And it, it makes it really difficult for them to grow their business. Another screen that, that it offers you is, um, it offers you a, a report to be able to see what did you bring in? What is upcoming? You can click on the tab to the right that shows you what's been paid. Um, it, it gives you how many invoices are, are to be paid, how many are overdue, how many are open to be due. Like it gives you clarity, it gives you transparency. So you can see, it, it allows you to pull multiple different reports, but it allows you to track your AR, account receivables without them, whether you do it just in Square, Stripe, Venmo, Zelle, however you get paid without having the transparency of that money coming in, your business is going to have a cash flow problem. So you have to make sure you stay on top of your payments coming in. QuickBooks allows, this, is, this particular screen is more for the invoicing side of it. Um, so it allows you to see. And then the other thing it allows you to do, you can pay your bills, right? Your QuickBooks, if you get an invoice from a contractor and you want to track what that contractor create, what they invoiced you for, you create a bill in QuickBooks, attach the invoice from the contractor right to this transaction. It tracks it for the length of your QuickBooks ownership. So as long as you have the account open, that is going to be in there. If you were to ever get audited by the IRS and they were to question you, what was that for? It's easy. Open the transaction. There's the original invoice. So it keeps really clear records for you if it's utilized. This is one of my favorite reports that I provide to clients on a quarterly basis and an annual basis. This gives you an overall picture of money going in and expenses going out. Um, this is I, I do this one on the on the annual one. Um, beside the money in and out, you also have a cash balance. Um, I, I want to pause for one second real quick. We are going to do a question and answer at the end. If you'll let me go through and then I'll have the ability to come back to any slides you have questions about. Um, I just want you to know that I'm not ignoring your hands being raised. I'm, I'm just requesting to save all the questions to the end and then we're going to leave a 20 to 20, 25 minute time frame at the end for y'all to ask me any questions that you may have and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. All right, so back to this, um, this is where we can track your cash flow. Uh, the green graph is talking about the money that came in and the blue is the money that's going out. This allows, when I sit down with clients to review their financials quarterly, we can look at what did you do last quarter? Now we kind of know what, what to expect the coming up quarter. So this is kind of a cash flow, it kind of gives you an overview. If you are out of balance, this is where it's gonna show. Most business will be able to say, Oh yeah, I bought a new piece of equipment in March. That's why my March expenses are higher than my income. But February or April, which should offset that. So th those are things that we guide and we we teach on and we just help businesses that want it and those that don't want it, you know, they can, oh, and this is available to you. You own your own QuickBooks subscription. 
We just have accountant access to them. We don't own, we don't carry your, your subscription. So you have access to all of this yourself in your own QuickBooks subscription. Um, this is another, some people prefer a pie chart versus a graph. So there's one important part I want to point out here. Um, see how the sales were at seven, 8,000 in January. Suddenly, February, March, they bottomed out. There's no sales in the books. And then if you look at your expenses, your pie chart is only halfway done. There's a huge gray area. I see this a lot. The reason this is happening is because the bookkeeping is not being done. So if you look at the bottom of the expenses, it says there's 20, there's 19 transactions that have not been categorized. So in order for you to have a complete financial picture, the finances actually have to be done. In this case, this report is not complete because the accounting is not done in the front. So this can only, you can only get clear records if, you're, if your transactions and if your bookkeeping is actually done. So that's why I, I and, and that's something that a lot of people will take partial financials to get their, um, try to get their loans. They will take partial financials to a business broker to sell their business. I have that come across my desk a lot. And they'll have four or five, 700 transactions waiting to be categorized and they don't know. So that's why, um, that's why I'm in town. <laughs> because what you don't know, we help cover the gap. Um, so we have another feature in QuickBooks that is, that is really, really wonderful. And this one here is very detailed. So there's only going to be a few tabs I can talk about. But if you look at underneath the sales overview, you're going to see all sales, which is what we're currently showing. There's a tab for invoices, estimates, customers, and products and services. So the all invoices tabs allows you to set a filter that allows you to see every customer that you have invoiced, and it allows you to see whether or not they have paid, when have they paid, are they overdue, how many days have they partially paid. It just gives you a complete picture of your invoicing. I highly recommend using QuickBooks Online invoicing if you are um, any type of service industry that are, or, or a um, yeah service industry, basically AC company, HVAC company, um, wedding florist, I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, if you are sending out invoices to receive money in, QuickBooks, it's free to do the invoicing. So you might as well do it in here because it tracks everything and it ties into your finances already. So the people that send invoices through Jobber, Square, um, different, you know, we have job tread, we have house call pro, um, they're so leap. We have so many different softwares that we deal with as an accounting firm of people that are using different, and it doesn't matter how many times they tell you that it integrates with QuickBooks. I almost always end up cleaning up a mess because it will duplicate it or it will not bring it in correctly. So those are fantastic. If you're going to use those and you don't want to use QuickBooks online to invoice, that's okay. Just don't integrate them. Don't connect them because it will create a mess for you to clean up and it will not give you clarity in your finances. So rather than connecting them and trying to integrate them, pull a report from your software and then we will match it to what you have in QuickBooks, making sure that what will through your software is also in your QuickBooks because at the end of the day, this is the data that the CPAs are going to use for the taxes. And this is what the IRS will audit if you ever were to get audited. Um, this is the other, um, this is, gives you a customer. So you can set up your customers in QuickBooks and it allows you to put all of the information in for that customer and it keeps it. I did a desktop to QuickBooks online conversion recently and they had 15 years worth of customer data. So we didn't want all of that in there because some of those were not no longer customers. So we exported it to Excel, cleaned it up, and we only imported active clients. So there's so many different things we can do in this sense, but it gives you a really good um, overall snapshot of your customers and your customers are important because they're your revenue. And then it allows you to see also how many dollars in estimates do you have out? How many, how much income do you have that's unfilled? How many, how many invoices are overdue? How many are open or what's the credit? And then you get to see what was recently paid. And there's so much more you can do on this on this screen. Um, one of the other things that people come across a lot that is probably the most important thing when you're owning, when you're opening your own business and you open your QuickBooks online, if you're going to invoice through your QuickBooks, 
the most important thing you do is you get your products and services set up correctly. Products and services are the line items that go into your invoices. And if they are not charted to the proper accounts, they will mess up your P&L balance sheet. They will mess up your chart of accounts and you will have a mess. You will not have clear, clear financials. Um, so get someone to help you properly understand what's a non-inventory item and how does it affect your chart of accounts? What is a service item and how does it affect your chart of accounts? If you're doing a service industry that requires to sell, charge state sales tax or the use tax, how does that reflect? How do you get that to reflect in your invoicing? Um, that is something that unless you take excessive training on it, it's a professional to help you do it. Uh, at the end of the day, it'll be worth it to spend a little bit up front to get it done versus thousands at the end to try to fix it. So um, setting up your products and services, what I'm trying to say, it's really important. So pay some extra attention to that in any accounting software. So here's what the profit and loss looks like. Um, I, I pulled this off of my QuickBooks accountant to give me a fake account into it does that allows me to use that fake account to pull different reports and, and basically do what I'm doing right here. Um, so so in your in the very beginning, when we first started about talking about those transactions that were sitting out front waiting to be categorized, when they are all properly categorized, they create this. This is what you take to the bank for loans. This is what you take to a business broker to sell your business, or this is what you take, this is what you produce for your CPA to be able to do taxes at the, at the end of the year. This is what you report for your business to the IRS. So the transactions from the very beginning to the reconciliation at the end create a profit and loss. The profit and loss tell the story of your business. There are so many details we can go into for the profit and loss in this a company is a landscaping company. So um, the, the difference, there's there's a couple of different levels with the, with the profit and loss that are very, very important, especially if you're trying to sell your business. You want to find your gross profit. And in order to properly find that, your books have to be properly set up. So find a way to learn how to do it yourself or find someone that can do it for you. Because the profit and loss will make or break you. The balance sheet of your business is the assets, the liabilities, and the equity that the business has. So if you have a, a vehicle that you have in the business you're using as a business expense, and there's a loan on that vehicle, they will both reflect on the balance sheet. The balance sheet is used for depreciation. On your taxes, it allows you to know um, what, what liabilities does the business have. If you try to go and sell your business, the balance sheet is a very important document that every business broker and a buyer will want to look at. They will want to look at, you know, what's the current bank status of, of the business? What's the cash flow status? They can see, um, and they can see any liabilities that the business has. They can see any assets that they might be purchasing in the purchase. Um, they can also see the equity. How much is the business owner taking out of the business as income? or how much have they invested to keep the business going. So the balance sheet tells you a lot about the health of the business. The transactions out front that we were categorizing from the very beginning determine the balance sheet. The other items that determine a balance sheet, let's say you are a new business and you're just getting started and you, have, you haven't even done any revenue, but you have startup expenses. So what you do is you, you Get the software set up, and this software can be set up 30 days in. It does not have to be set up the same day you start your business. Go out and create some revenue, and then get with a bookkeeper. Get your software set up. Get your business bank account into the software. Any transactions, any expenses that you had in your business that you paid cash or personally because you didn't have any business income, Bring the documentation for that, and then we journal enter that in, and it goes onto your balance sheet and your profit and loss. Those items can be entered by a journal entry. So it doesn't, just because you used your personal account to start your business doesn't mean that cannot be expensed. It can be expensed. It just needs to be journal entered into the business. I got through that a little faster than I thought I was going to. Well, so I, I want to, I want to take some time to answer um, quite a few questions we have uh, coming in, um, Diane. And I'm going to leave this, um, 
this slide up because this is um, my contact information. If you want, um, if you want help in setting any of this up, I, I do want to caution you. It is tax season, and we have a March fifteenth deadline looming. But as I was telling Diane earlier, I have collaborated with four other businesses, other bookkeeping firms here in Sarasota and in Bradenton. And so if I come across someone I can't help or we get too full, um, I still take the time to find out what you need so that I can match you with the best bookkeeper that I'm collaborating with because I've taken the time to meet these people in person. I know what they specialize in. I know what they're great at, what they're not great at. And everybody, we are, we're human. We all make mistakes and we all have our weaknesses and we all have our strong points. So it takes all of us. We are a village. It takes all of us to help small businesses. So even if I can't help you, I, I can connect you with someone that can. So that's why I'm leaving my slide up for my information. I have a, a quick question, I think. Uh, so a business is starting and they're, they're determined to do this themselves. Would you work with a business on a short-term basis to just help them set up their categories or would they have to commit to some no. time period? That's a, that's a great question, Diane. We do QuickBooks Online setups all the time. And where we do, we set up QuickBooks Online, help them get their bank account connected. We will journal in the business expenses that they had previously before starting the business. And then we will offer them even an hour of training where we can show them the important things of what they need to do. And they are not required to sign a long-term contract with us because it would not benefit them or me. Good to know. On a related topic, uh, I understand there have been changes in who is a 1099 and who is a W-2. We have a webinar in March specifically for this really, really important topic because you don't want to be caught giving people 1099s when you should be giving them W-2s. I'm sure you're aware of these new laws, Melinda. I, I am. And I actually have a, I have an HR company, payroll company that I work very closely with. I outsource my payroll to them if they're using anything other than QuickBooks Online. And she's currently dealing with someone that has a $13,000 fine. Mm because they treated they treated employees as contractors when they really were employees. So right. that is an important thing to know. You can't just say, well, I don't want the payroll expense. So therefore you're a 1099 contractor. So if you're in this position and you are considering this, please go to this webinar that Diane is talking about, learn what the difference is because it can literally make or break your business. Well, everyone here will be getting um, information about that webinar, about that upcoming webinar. I'll make sure that it's in the email that you get as a follow-up because you're going to be getting a copy of Melinda's slides as well as the recording of this webinar. So uh, keep an eye open for that. A couple of questions, uh, basically uh, asking, is QuickBooks the only tracking system or are there others or do they have a, a or do I guess do we have a good cost uh, chart that we could uh, show? Which uh, I don't think we have that chart. But do you have any uh, thoughts on other? Uh, I do, I do. There, there's quite a uh, there's quite a few others. Um, and as I said in the beginning, and some of you might have missed out on the beginning, but as I said in the beginning, um, QuickBooks is only what we specialize in. But there are many others. There's FreshBooks. There's Wave. Um, there is zero. Um, and if you're really, really tiny where you only have, you just starting and you really just have a few transactions per month you're doing in business, or let's say you have a full-time job and you're just venturing out in a side gig and starting a business, you can track your items via Excel as well. If you know how to create a P&L balance sheet on Excel, you can do that in the very beginning as well. Um, Wave is is another it, it it it's a free accounting software. It does not do what QuickBooks does. It does not have the reporting. Um, it 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 is it does work for small business that are just trying to get started. And can if if one started in one of these, could they migrate 
to QuickBooks or is that, uh, you know, is there an export capability? It is. Um, we, we've recently done that. We've exported someone's books from Wave because they started out with Wave. It was free. It was, you know, it was affordable in the beginning, but then within um, a year they had grown past Wave. So we were able to export, export all of their crucial data and import it into QuickBooks Online, like their customer lists, um, their invoices. We could export and import those items. And then we just connected the QuickBooks Online. Um, and if it was a year that went by, we just did a new QuickBooks starting in the new year. And then we just took their tax return and we, we journal entered in the expenses and the liability and the asset accounts from the tax return. Good, good to know. Um, let me see who, Caroline. Caroline has, uh... Is, I think I know Caroline is currently mm -hmm. using Square for her uh, system to track invoices, sales, taxes, future payments, unpaid invoices, etc. They also offer online uh, bookkeeping and email marketing. Is QuickBooks better than Square? QuickBooks does more than Square. Um, so QuickBooks will give you a lot more reporting ability and it will accommodate growth a lot better. I have several clients that also use Square. Um, they don't use it for the accounting. A few of them have tried and it just, it doesn't do, it doesn't give them the clarity that, that QuickBooks Online does. It just depends on what you want. Um, the main thing, and Square is constantly evolving as well. So if Square eventually comes out, comes out with a point where they allow someone to categorize transactions outside of their invoicing and estimates, or they can actually track their business expenses. So Square typically only offers tracking for whatever you do within Square. You don't have the ability to bring in other method of expenses and income outside of Square. QuickBooks Online allows that. Mm. So let's say you're using Square for invoicing and you, they do offer you a credit card or debit card for that invoicing account. So you have expenditures, but let's say you have another credit card that you're using for business. That, that Square does not allow you to bring those debits and credits in. QuickBooks Online is an accounting software that allows you to bring income and expenses from any method in to create accounting. Okay, good difference. Hmm. Uh, do you know what the cost is uh, for QuickBooks Online in general? Yes, thank you. that's a great question. So QuickBooks Online Simple Start, which is what most people need, is $15 a month for three months, and then it goes up to $30 a month. If you need a little bit higher, um, if you need a little bit more, so the subscriptions go up from there. Um, and they'll go up to $200 a month. People that are that are being charged the $200 a month are people that are running an e-commerce business and they're having their inventory tracked. And, and so it it literally, it the subscriptions, they range up from $30 a month once the 15, it's a, it's a discount for three months. And then it goes to $30 a month up to $200 a month. Most of my clients come into the 30 or the next level is $60 a month. So most of my clients go into that range. I'm on QuickBooks Online and don't see a cash flow trend report. I only see statement of cash flows. Are they the same? No, they're a little bit different. Um, and, and do you know um, what QuickBooks um, Online subscription you have? Do you have Simple Start or are you using um, a higher version? Yeah, this is from Anonymous asking, so okay. I can't ask Anonymous. So no, that's okay. No worries. Um, so there's different reports. So if you go into the, the dashboard, you can click on different reports and you can create multiple different reports without actually going into, into the QuickBooks. I can't really show you what others are available to you, um, but they're on that same dashboard. Uh, how do we accommodate contractors? This is Anne from Anne. Uh, Anna, I think it is. How do we accommodate contractors that live outside the USA and UK, Canada, Uganda for my uh, consulting business? Great question, Anna. Um, you can wire them their payment and then there is a document here. So you will track them in your QuickBooks just like any other contractor. And at the end of the year, your CPA will give you a document that has to be submitted to the IRS with the amount of money that that outside of the U.S. contractor was paid. Okay. If uh, Also, this is also from Anna. 
uh, if a business owner borrows against the business and needs to repay the business, does QuickBooks cover this? Yes, it does. So on your balance sheet, you set up a long-term liability account so that that reflects the money that went out. And then as you're paying the money back and every payment goes back into that liability account until it's zeroed back out. Uh, Anonymous is also asking, uh, should my bookkeeper or my accountant be helping me figure out if my business is financially sound? That's a great question. Um, some bookkeeping firms offer cash flow analysis, they offer CFO services, and some do not. So it depends on the capability of your bookkeeping. I would start with your bookkeeper because they usually tend to cost less than the accountants do. And if the bookkeeper does not provide those services, then that you would need to go to your accountant for that. Um, Anna is also asking, what does it mean when you are set up as a vendor already with QuickBooks? Um, if you're set up as a vendor already, um, Anna, can you um, elaborate on that just a little bit? If you're set up as a vendor, for example, if you are taking money out of the business, if you're the owner and you're taking a loan from the business and then paying it, you would have to have something to say, where did that loan go? So you could create yourself as a vendor to be able to make that loan payment too, to then be able to track it when it comes back in. If, if that's what you mean, that's how you would do that. Otherwise, I, I you need to clarify what you mean about setting up a, as a vendor for payments. She, she has a follow-up. My contractor started, he set me up as a vendor. My contractor, contractor. Stated, oh, stated. You know what? Let me, uh, Anna, I'm going to allow you to talk. <laughs> if you turn on your mic, go ahead, Anna. Are you there? Anna? If you turn on your microphone, we should be able to hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So my contractor stated I was, I'm filing taxes now, um, but I've not been using QuickBooks actually. So when I asked him to give me his 1099, he stated he already set me up as a vendor. I should have seen that you know, on my end but I don't have this information at all. So that, that's completely different from what you're asking him for. If I understand you correctly, Anna, you yeah. paid him money yes. for a service and you're asking yes. him for a W-9 so that you can issue him a 1099. Yes, no, but, but he, he told me that he already set me up as a vendor on QuickBooks, but I'm not using QuickBooks yet. Okay, so it doesn't matter if he already set you up as a vendor in QuickBooks. You need his W-9 to issue him a 1099 for your side of the business. Oh, okay, because I just... He set you up as a vendor in his QuickBooks, right? Oh, maybe that's what he means. Maybe I think that's, that's what, what he means, means, where he is tracking what you're paying him. But that doesn't help you. The IRS still requires you to submit a 1099 on the money that you paid him for your side of the business. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've submitted that one for him for okay. the 1099, yeah. Okay. But then I always have to send him a, a W-9 as well, right? The W-9 is the document that he will fill out to give you the information that you need on the 1099. That's all the oh. W-9 is for. Okay, let me ask my CP. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank all you. right. Thank yes. you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, Bianna, I think, how challenging is it to transition from WAVE to QuickBooks, and how much approximately might that cost? So we, we just spoke about this for a few minutes ago, Elena. Um, the, the challenge with Prince, challenge with converting from Wave to QuickBooks Online is there is no actual conversion. So what you do is you export the customers and invoices, and you import those into QuickBooks Online, and then you can either export depending on how many months back you're, you're exporting or transitioning over, you would be better off connecting the bank account that is in WAVE that you're going to be using the business account into QuickBooks and just bringing all of those transactions over that way. Otherwise, you can um, export all of the transactions out of WAVE and import them into QuickBooks as an Excel. And you can export them into Excel and import Excel into QuickBooks and it turns them into QuickBooks transactions. 
Um, our fee for setting up the QuickBooks Online and a chartered account is $595. And that gets you everything in, everything set up, making sure that your chartered accounts are properly arranged so that you can take on, uh, you can do the ongoing bookkeeping or the transactions will go to the proper chartered accounts. Here's a really important uh, question, I think, from Lil Liliana. Since your bank accounts are tracked, what is the security for your account information? Great question, Liliana. So I'm a former banker. And so I understand the security that banks use um, in, you know, for online banking, et cetera. And yes, we all know they get hacked. Um, I have been using QuickBooks Online and I have been doing this for over 25 years and I have never heard of a QuickBooks getting hacked. The level of security that QuickBooks Online utilizes is extensive. It is, it's better than bank security, just from what I've per personally witnessed and people that I know that have been hacked from banking. I've never seen a QuickBooks Online subscription get hacked. So it is very, very secure. Where the security lacks is the transition between getting those documents from the, the, like, for example, if you were to download a bank statement onto your computer and then upload it into QuickBooks Online, that's where the security breach is. But to connect your bank accounts directly into your QuickBooks Online subscription, I, I believe it to be very, very secure. Good. Patricia is saying, this is a big question, I think. Do you have a list of sa standard business categories? <laughs> um, no. Because, okay, so let me let me go back on that. So Patricia, when you set up your QuickBooks online, QuickBooks will ask you specific questions. For example, they will say, what industry are you in? And they have a whole list of suggestions. Right. Um, and then with whatever you choose, they come with a standard chart of accounts. And then those standard chart of accounts, oh, they're plentiful. There's like 250 of them. It's ridiculous how many they give you. It's very overwhelming. Half of those you will never use. They just sit there in case you were to ever use them. So it will come with a standard chart of accounts. And then all you need to do is you need to edit those chart of accounts and set up the ones that truly pertain to your business. So you will need to add some and you can inactivate some if they if they are cumbersome on your on your balance sheet or on your chart of accounts. You can deactivate accounts that you're not going to use. I used QuickBooks years ago and uh, judging by your screenshots, it's changed dramatically but those <laughs> categories those categories were always exciting to work with uh joy is saying that she's a corporate accountant in sarasota and interested in learning how to do bookkeeping as a part-time job do you provide mentorship or training or do you know someone who can help her learn the ropes and i think that's probably a question that you might want to uh take down uh melinda's yeah. email address and contact yes, her joy i would love to speak to you about this joy so please take my email on the slide and send us over an email and we will reach out to you um and get you like i'll have a cup of coffee with you let's sit down and talk let's find out what you know um, and see what you're looking to get into. And I would I would love to. I would love to help you um, navigate that. It'd be another referral per person for you. Exactly, you? another collaborate, collaborating partner. Exactly, very helpful. Liliana has another question. At what point should you consider moving from free tracking to QuickBooks? So here, here's kind of my guideline for that, Liliana. If you open an LLC, and you are just getting started out and you are, um, you're busy growing your business. If you get to the point that you hit $60,000 a year in net profit, then you need to sit down and talk to an accountant or a CPA. There, That's a difference, by the way. Talk, sit down and talk to one of them to discuss the option of taxing your business as an S-corp. That at that point, you will definitely not be wanting to track your 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 financials through a free software and or Excel. Um, even before that, I don't recommend it. So I would say thirty to forty thousand dollars a year in revenue. It's time for you to move it over because if you have thirty to forty thousand dollars a year in revenue and you don't document all of your expenses, you're going to end up overpaying in taxes. Mm. Having those items, having a QuickBooks set up to where you are tracking everything properly and everything is being reconciled on a monthly basis is how you're going to assure that you're getting all of your deductions. 
Elena is asking, how long will it take for a new business to be onboarded and set up in QuickBooks? Um, it, if you can set QuickBooks up yourself and send accountant access to your bookkeeper or your accountant where they in turn can get everything set up, um, it varies on the size of the business. If the business is itty bitty tiny just getting started, it can take a couple of hours versus if a business has a bunch of journal entries to bring in, which are expenses that they had in personal accounts before they started their business, it's going to take a lot longer. Sure. So there is no, there, I don't really know how to define how much time it takes. It, yeah. it, it, it varies on the business. Well, that's that's the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Jennifer is saying, do you, would you recommend that people take courses in small business accounting? If you have the time, absolutely. And we the have more you know, the better equipped you're the more you know about accounting and business expenses and, and, and income, Jennifer, the better you're gonna be at running your business. So absolutely, if you have that time and it doesn't take away from creating revenue for your business, then definitely go do it. If it's gonna take away for revenue creating time in your business, Consider outsourcing that. Focus on what you're good at, which is yeah. creating revenue for your business, doing your actual business. We have, I hate to point out our website again, but Minnesota. No, please do. <laughs> Minnesota.score.org. Look for some webinars that we've had about business financing. We've had webinars that, that help you understand all of your, your charts of finance. And, um, and we also have templates to help you on our website. So please uh, think about that. Okay, Alexandra, in case a person, uh, in case a person closes, closes their businesses business and closes their you. QuickBooks account. Yeah, okay, so Alexandra, what you want to do, if you know you're closing your business and you're closing your QuickBooks account, you need that data for seven years. So what you want to do is go into your QuickBooks, go to the general ledger, and you want to download the complete general ledger. So you can download it and you can put it in a flash drive and hang on to it for seven years. If the IRS was to come look, you need that data. But you don't have to keep QuickBooks open just to keep that. And the QuickBooks, if you cancel your subscription, QuickBooks Online will only allow you to view the transactions for one year. If you have a QuickBooks desktop, um, you keep that data forever in that desktop as long as that computer is alive. Um, but the, again, the way around that is download the general ledger so that um, you have that data without having to keep it in QuickBooks. Good, good uh, suggestion. Have you heard of FreshBooks? I have. Um, I've converted two businesses from FreshBooks to QuickBooks Online. Um, and, and not because there's anything wrong with FreshBooks per se. Um, it's just like any software out there. You use what you're comfortable with. You use yeah. what you're actually going to use, what you're actually going to master, and make sure it gives you clarity in your finances. So if that's FreshBooks, if you're more accustomed to FreshBooks, then by all means, go ahead and use it. Um, I, I, I look at it, um, I got the accountant access to it. I had a rep get on and walk me through it. Um, I, I did, it didn't give me what QuickBooks Online does. So mm -hmm. QuickBooks Online is still my, it's still my choice. It's my Your preference. Your go-to. Caroline yeah. is a follow-up. She uh, is a first-time business owner and she found a tax professional and is meeting with them soon. Can she deduct from her taxes uh, the uh on her taxes next year for the cost of meeting with her? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then that's yet a great thing to, and that's a great question, by the way. Thank you for asking that. Um, you can, all of your accounting, bookkeeping fees, um, tax preparation, all of those are business expenses. So when you outsource your bookkeeping to a bookkeeping firm or an accounting firm, that's a business expense. It's a needed business expense for you to be able to grow your business. But yes, you can definitely deduct that. Uh, if you pay yourself weekly from your overall sales, is there a form that you need to fill in for taxes or do you fill out a tax form at your bank? Great question. So if you're tax, if you're an LLC, you can take owner's draw, that's what that's called, um, as many times as you want. It, it, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no law to it. Here is what you need to keep in mind. For every dollar that you take out of the business, you are subject to a 15% self-employment tax. Is that one so, five? One five? Fifteen? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fifteen okay. 
10% self-employment tax. So there's really no documentation you need to keep until it's tax time. In QuickBooks Online, there is an owner's equity account. So every dollar, or every amount that you transfer out to your personal account for your personal bills is tracked through that account. And at the end of the year, your CPA or accountant will use that number on the IRS form. And that is what you are going to be paying 15% um, self-employment tax on. The self-employment tax is the Medicare and the Social Security. Good to know. Keep that in mind, Caroline. All right, uh, Liliana has a follow-up. Um, she's in the startup phase. Is it better to start with QuickBooks from the get-go uh, if you do not want to um, pay $200 a month expense? But didn't you say that it was more in the $30 range? Yes, yeah, so so Liliana, the, the QuickBooks Simple Start, which is all you need, is $30 a month. It's not $200 a month. And, and I tell businesses this, the most important thing is register your business with your state, get your local tax accounts that you need, the county taxes, if you're required to have them where you're at. And then when you're, when you're finished getting that set up, go open a business bank account. Do not run your business through your personal account. Mm. Open a business bank account and then operate for 30 days. You know, go go get some revenue in, track your expenses, keep all of your business receipts. And then at the end of those 30 days, you can then set up your QuickBooks online. And then you will get three months at 50% off. So that's $15 a month for the first three months. So overall, you have four months to really go out there and get the revenue started for your business. And then um, it, it gives you a little bit of that break. The Simple Start fee is only $30 a month. Enterprise is goes up to $200 a month, but that is for businesses that are doing, you know, big um, e-commerce businesses, or I'm, I'm talking multi-million dollar businesses. You don't want to run a small business on that, on that subscription limb. Okay. Um, let's see, Elena, uh, could you please explain QBI, qualified business income? Yes, so qualified business income is, um, and there, there, this again, Elena, this varies from industries. It varies from what you do. I'll give you two examples. Um, I have a, um, I, I have a client that um, they do um, airport transport rides. They do dog walking. They do multiple different things, and they do all of that under a business, so that they can record that as business income. And then on top of that, you know, within that, they have also business expenses they can take on. Them. So what is qualified business income is any revenue you generate for your business. So if it's a dollar or if it's $5,000, it's, it's business income. And then you take your expenses against that. And whatever you have netted from that, whatever is the net is what you're going to be, um, that's what you're going to be taxed on. And again, that depends on how you're taxed. If you're an LLC or if you're an LLC taxed as an S corp, if you're a partnership or if you're a corporation. And for all of that understanding, you would need to get with a tax professional, an accountant or a CPA, and they can walk you through or Google it. There's, Google gives you a lot of definition. What does it mean to be an S corp? And it'll explain it to you. Um, but when it comes to actually do the filing, go see a CPA or an accountant. Uh, I think this is a tough question from Anonymous. How expensive is it to transfer a business to QuickBooks after two years? Oh, and that varies. So um, it can be as, you know, depending, it, it's based on usually um, how many bank accounts are being transferred, um, how many transactions in those bank accounts, how many loan accounts are in there, how many assets, you know, how much needs to be set up. So that can range anywhere from, you know, a $595 setup part of accounts and you bring in all the transactions or it can go um, two years. I mean, I think the most expensive um, I did a conversion for was it was $7,000 for two years, but it was thousands of transactions that we had to bring in and categorize. So it depends on the level of the conversion. Let's say everything um, you are just going to download the general ledger of whatever you had and you're gonna start a fresh set of books for the year that you're currently in. So like in this example, we are only in February. Let's say you start your QuickBooks for February, January 1st of 2024. Anything you did before that, you would have on a general ledger for auditing purposes. If you are not confident 
that your taxes are correct for those previous years. And it warrants for someone to sit down and redo all of those numbers to make sure that you took all of your expenses, that you recorded all of your income. A lot of people forget to report their square income or their Zale income. They may have the Zale going to their personal account, and, and that's a common one. They may forget to report the Zale income on their tax return so, or on their books, on their business. So it just depends. I mean, it's really, really hard to say. I, I give people free estimates. I will look at their books. I will dive in with my accountant software, and I will go in and find out what needs to be done. And I've gotten so good at it that I can, I, I'm, I'm pretty accurate when it comes to see every now and then I get a surprise thrown at me. But for the most part, it's, it's pretty easy for a well-versed bookkeeping firm to go in and find out what you need to do based on what information you give them. Yeah. Where the information is currently stored is. That's a huge key. thing. Yeah. <laughs> if it's on an Excel, it's not that big of a deal as long as it's accurate. Right. The accuracy right. is the huge part. In Excel. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. <laughs> In Excel. Uh, yeah. So that can be, if it's accurate, you can just import it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I think we have answered all. Everything is in the business account. Okay. Oh, okay. that's fantastic. That would not be that big of a deal. Right. Wonderful. All right. Wonderful. I think we have run out of questions. I've <laughs> uh, put up our visit uh, score.org slash Minnesota. I've mentioned it a few times. I encourage you to reach out, think about getting a mentor. They can really help you uh, get past the hurdles in your business. Um, also, you will be getting an email. As I mentioned, you'll be getting an email with a link to the recording of this webinar, as well as a copy of Melinda's slides. Uh, and you'll also get a survey from our national organization. If you would please take a moment to fill in that survey and let them know what you thought about this webinar. Uh, also, you'll be uh, asked to grade it on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best. So keep that in mind. Um, so Sean was saying, sorry, he was late, but 20 minutes that he was here was so helpful. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, yes, Melinda is very encouraging. And I think that that I would be happy working with her because she would, you know, I would feel confident with the kind of information that she's giving. So thank you all so much for coming. And thank you, Melinda, for sharing your expertise. I think everybody got something out of this. It was my pleasure, Diane. Thank you for having me. And um, if anybody else has any questions, I would love to carry this on in an email. I am happy to respond to you. No obligations. Um, so shoot us over an email and we will do our best to fill everything in and help you, you know, close those gaps. Um, this is what I tell people for everyone that's still on here. This is this is an, an, an analogy I give to people. Running your business without accurate finances is like driving a car with a blindfold on. Yep. You will go forward, but you will end up in a ditch. <laughs> but you might bump into a couple of things you along. You will end up in the ditch. <laughs> Good analogy. Thank you so much, Melinda. It was bye my bye. pleasure, Diane. I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye.